I found this large white tray at my thrift store. I loved the size. The cutout detail along the edges is so pretty and the oval shape is unique. And of course, you cannot beat the price of $3.99. In fact, when I went to wash this, I flipped it over and I found out that originally it's from Ikea, so I know that we have saved ourselves a lot of money by purchasing this tray at the thrift store. There are a few things that we need to fix on our tray. The first is that there were some areas where the paint had chipped and then also there are some rust areas that need to be sanded down and covered up. So I got a fine grit sandpaper and I sanded over the rust areas and also the chip paint so that everything was smooth and then I washed it off to get all the dust and debris off so it would be nice and clean for painting. I am going to repaint our white tray white. So I took it outside and I got some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted all over the tray. I made sure that the areas that were chipped or rusted got a thorough coat of paint. Once everything was covered in the white spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Now it's time to spruce up our tray. We are going to do it with some cardstock. I had this book of cardstock and inside was a really, really pretty blue and white rose cardstock. I love this design. I'm going to cut out these flowers. I started off with just a pair of scissors, but there was a lot of indents and details that needed to be cut away, so I ended up switching over to an X-Acto knife and a self-healing mat. You can use either one, it'll work both ways. I'm cutting my flowers out individually because one piece of cardstock would not fit across the entire bottom, the oval part, and I didn't want to see a seam where I tried to align the pieces together. So what I'm going to do is just cut away these individual flowers and place them sporadically throughout the bottom of the tray. So once all of my roses were cut out, I did a quick dry run. I added them to the bottom of the tray and moved them around to put them in the correct spot. Then I got some Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I painted the Mod Podge onto the bottom of the tray. I placed my cardstock blue and white roses over the Mod Podge. I continued adding the Mod Podge and positioning the roses on the tray until everything was in place. Then I let this first layer dry for about an hour. Then I added a top layer of Mod Podge over the roses and the tray. I added a decent amount. I want everything to be coated really well in the Mod Podge. This top layer of Mod Podge will protect the tray and the cardstock. It also adds a nice sheen to the top of the tray. Once the Mod Podge had been covered over the entire surface of the tray, I let it dry for three hours. And here is our gorgeous tray all dressed up. I love these roses. They are so pretty. I love the blue and white. And you could use any paper that fits your style or season, the possibilities are endless on this project. There are so many ways that you can display this tray as well. You could put it on a frame stand. You could use it as a tray and put decorative objects on it as well. Because we put Mod Podge over the paper, it's sealed so you could use it for food. I've never seen anything quite like this tray and that is what makes thrifting so special. You can take a regular piece and customize it to your liking and to your style. As soon as I entered my thrift store, my eyes were drawn to an exquisite ornate mirror hanging on the wall. It instantly caught my attention and I knew it had potential. This thrifted mirror is originally from Ikea and it came at the low, low price of $9.99, so I scooped it up. It is too dark for my taste. I don't love the black and it also has some areas where the paint has chipped. There were also some stickers on this mirror. So there was a bunch of sticker residue which had to be cleaned off, which is no problem. I got a rag and some dish soap and I scrubbed all that residue and all the dust and debris off of the mirror itself. And then I moved on and cleaned off the frame. We are going to be painting the frame of this mirror and so I needed to protect the mirror itself. 
I'm going to do that with some copy paper and blue painter's tape. Now this copy paper will slide right underneath the frame of the mirror. There's a little bit of a gap, and so I slid a couple pieces underneath, and in the areas where the mirror was still exposed, I just covered that up with the blue painter's tape. Now it's time to paint our mirror. We're going to paint it in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I took my mirror outside. I made sure that it was coated in the spray paint. I got inside those beautiful ornate nooks and crannies to make sure it was 100% coated in the gold spray paint. Once the first coat was on, I let it dry for one hour. I painted a second coat of the gold Rust-Oleum spray paint on it just to make sure that I got inside and coated every little part of this mirror. We don't want to see any of the black paint coming through. After the second coat of paint was on, I let it dry for another hour. At this point, I looked at the mirror and I thought it was too gold. It was like 24 karat gold, which wasn't the look I was going for. So in order to tone that down, I'm going to spray a top coat of paint. This is a metallic warm gold spray paint and I sprayed a light coat of this over the top of the mirror. By adding this muted champagne gold over the top, it toned down the 24 karat gold which gave me the warm gold tone I wanted. Once the top layer was on, I let it dry for an additional hour. Now we can remove the blue painter's tape and the copy paper and see our beautiful newly updated mirror. If you've priced out mirrors like this, they are so expensive. So for me to get this mirror at my thrift store for $9.99 and paint it to make it look brand new is such a score. I love this mirror so much that I want to have it in my bedroom, so I'm going to actually layer it in front of a large streamlined mirror that's on my fireplace mantle. So I just took this mirror and placed it in the center of this mirror and leaned it up against it. By combining mirrors of various shapes, sizes, and frames, you can create a unique display. I love the way that these stacked mirrors reflect the chandelier in my space, and I love the juxtaposition between the ornate frame and the more streamlined contemporary frame. I think that they complement each other so well. Wasn't this a fun, easy flip? We definitely lucked out finding this beautiful mirror at the thrift store. I found this interesting looking vase at the thrift store. Uh, the size is fantastic. I love the detail on it. The color, however, is a little reptilian. It's got scales all over it. The green tone isn't the prettiest. But for the low price of $4.99, I knew we had nothing to lose. So this first flip is actually going to be a dupe. I was on the Paragold website and I came across this jar. It had these stunning gold branches on it. I was so inspired by it. Now I know that this jar does not mimic our vase, but we are going to take inspiration from this Paragold jar. Now the one thing I did not like about it was the price. It is on sale right now, but it's still at a steep cost of $162. And I know that we can get something very similar for much, much less. Now we need a lid to our vase to create a jar. So I went to Hobby Lobby and they had some wood rounds. They have a whole bunch of sizes there of these wood rounds and I love the detail on them and they're always so affordable. So I picked up one of those. The edges on this wood round were a little rough so I took some fine grit sandpaper and sanded down all of the edges until it was nice and smooth. So now I have my two pieces. I'm gonna take them outside and I'm going to spray them in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed the wood round first. I made sure that it was completely coated in the white spray paint. And then I moved on to our reptilian vase. We got rid of the scales by painting it completely in the white spray paint. Once both pieces had been completely covered in the paint, I let it dry for one hour. I'm going to create my gold branches on my Cricut Maker with some gold permanent vinyl. I had my Cricut Maker cut out these branches. I weeded away the excess vinyl. Then I got a large piece of transfer tape, put it over the top of the vinyl branches, 
pressed it firmly to the vinyl. Then I got a pair of scissors because I'm going to cut out each one of these branches individually. So once they had been cut, I removed the backing and then I placed them on my jar. One thing that I've learned over time is that if you're putting vinyl on a curved surface, if you make little slits along the side, the vinyl will lay flatter. So that's what I did. I cut the transfer tape so that the vinyl could lay flat on our vase. Once my first cherry blossom was where I wanted it to be, I pressed it firmly to the vase with my scraper tool and then I removed the transfer tape. I rotated the vase and then got the second cherry blossom branch and put it on the opposite side. I did the exact same thing. I pressed the vinyl to the vase and then removed the transfer tape. With my third vinyl branch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half because I want to take both of these pieces and add them to the cherry branches that are already on the vase because I want to fill in that vacant space that is between the two large branches. By simply adding these gold branches to this vase, it looks brand new. So now let's move on to the lid. What I'm gonna do with our lid is put a knob in the center. Now, the knob that I'm going to be using is actually a, a knob that we used in a previous project. We did a high-end duped box and I used this marble knob with a gold trim. I purchased this set at Ross. And so I had some leftover, which I love. I love using things that I already have because I know it's not gonna cost me any extra money. So I got my drill and I marked a dot with a pencil in the center of the wood round. I actually put the lid on top of a spray paint lid because when I drill through the wood, it will go into the vacant space in the lid and not drill into my marble tray below. Now that my hole has been drilled in the center, I can add some more gold vinyl branches to the lid. So I just simply pressed one final branch on the top of the lid. I had the branch cascade down the side and then I tucked the excess underneath the lid and then pressed the leaves on the details on the side. Now that the vinyl is in place on the lid, I can get my marble knob and place it in the center. I put the washer and the nut on the back to hold it firmly into place. And now I can simply take that lid and put it right on top of my vase. You guys, how beautiful is this vase slash jar? I cannot believe how beautiful this is. The lid is stunning, the branches are gorgeous, the fresh coat of white paint makes this vase look so expensive and high-end. This jar has definitely come a long way from when we found it at the thrift store. And it looks so similar to our inspiration piece. The branches are almost identical. I love the gold and the white combination together. Ours is not the exact same size or shape, but if I add up all the costs that went into creating my jar slash vase, it only cost $14.24, which is a great deal. That's a huge savings and considering where this vase came from, it looks 100% different. And of course, you can take the lid off of this and use it as a vase. So it's multifunctional. You can get dual purposes out of this decor piece. We definitely flipped this thrift store find into a show-stopping piece of home decor. I love trays. I have a hard time passing them up when I see them at my thrift store. And this brown teak tray was no exception. It had a lot of potential. The size was right. I loved the cute handles. And of course, the price is always right at my thrift store. It was only $3.99. We are going to give this tray a fresh, bright makeover, but first we need a neutral backdrop. So we're gonna say goodbye to the brown teak. We're gonna take it outside and spray it in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted the underside of the tray first. Once the back and the sides were fully coated in the white spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. After the side was dry, I flipped it over and I sprayed the top of the tray and one more coat on the sides. Once this surface area is fully saturated in the white spray paint, I let it dry for another hour. 
Now that we have a neutral backdrop, we can add a bright pop of spring to our tray. When I was at Home Goods, I was in the party section with the wrapping paper and the gift bags, and I saw this stunning gift bag. I loved this floral print on it. It had several shades of blue, and of course I love my white and my gold, so I scooped this up and it was only $3.49, which is a great price. We are going to cut this floral bag down to size and Mod Podge it on top of our tray. Now, I really like using gift bags because it's thicker than paper or napkins, so it won't tear when we add it to the tray. So what I did was I simply just tore it on the sides and the bottom and then laid it out flat. Next, I'm going to measure my tray so I got a ruler out. And once I had those dimensions, I grabbed my rotary cutter, a self-healing mat, and I kept that ruler. I flipped the bag over to cut the back side. I simply used my rotary cutter to cut the bag to the exact size I needed to fit onto my tray. Before I Mod Podge it permanently onto my tray, I'm gonna do a quick dry run to make sure that it fits, which it did. So now I can get my Mod Podge and a sponge brush and add a liberal amount of the Mod Podge to the bottom of the tray. I would Mod Podged along the corners, the sides, and added a whole bunch to the center. Once the tray was covered in the Mod Podge, I got my bag and I placed it over the top of the Mod Podge. I took my scraper tool and I used that to press my gift bag firmly to the tray. Using the kitchen scraper not only fuses everything together nicely, but it can also press out any air bubbles that may be trapped underneath the paper. Once my paper was in place, I got some more Mod Podge and I sponge brushed that over the surface of the gift bag. Again, I added a liberal amount of Mod Podge over the surface. Don't worry about the cloudy appearance of the Mod Podge right now. It does dry clear and will be almost imperceptible. Once the gift bag had been fully covered in the Mod Podge, I let it dry for three hours. Our tray already looks so fantastic, but I wanted to add one more bit of flair. So what I'm going to do is get some washi tape. This is gold washi tape. I purchased it at Target. It came in a variety pack, and the sheen and the color of this washi tape matches perfectly with the gold that's on our gift bag. So we're going to clean up the edges a little bit and we're going to add some of this washi tape as a border along my tray. I simply placed the tape along the edges. I ran it down the side, cut it, I ran it down the other side once again, cut it, and I simply just continued to add the washi tape along all four edges of my tray. This gold tape was a perfect addition to this tray. I love how it cleans up the edges, but it also ties the gold color together. This extra detail made this tray extra special. And here we are with our finished tray. You guys, look at how beautiful this looks. This gift bag was the perfect choice for this tray. The colors of the flowers are stunning. I love the shades of blue. I love the shiny pop of the gold. This tray could be a standalone tray, but you could also add some beautiful spring touches to the center. The colors on this tray is giving you a quick sneak peek into the color scheme for spring, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. But can you believe that we purchased this tray at the thrift store for $3.99, gave it a makeover, it's stunning now, it looks high-end, it's unique, one of a kind, and I simply love it. Another item that I found at my thrift store that I absolutely loved was this metal container. I loved the size of it, and the cutouts were so cool. And of course, you gotta love the price of $4.99. So I scooped it up and brought it home. What I do not love about this piece is the color. It's too dark, so we're gonna brighten it up. So I took this container outside and I sprayed it in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the entire outside of this container was painted in the spray paint and the inside. Once everything was 100% coated in the spray paint, 
I let it dry for one hour. This piece already looks a hundred times better, but we are going to take it a little bit further and we're gonna add some additional details to our container. There's a raised line that goes around the entire circumference of this container, and so we are going to paint it in some metallic champagne gold paint. I got a paintbrush and a piece of copy paper just to make sure I didn't go over the line, and I painted this line that went around the entire circumference of this container. Once it was done, I let it dry for a couple hours. One more detail that we are going to add is feet. So when I was at Michael's, they had these little wooden rounds. They are doll heads, which is a little odd, but they work beautifully when you need feet because it has a flat top and the rest is round. Another great thing is that all regular priced items were 30% off, so we got them for a great price. So I took these wooden rounds outside and I sprayed them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once they were 100% coated in this spray paint, I let them dry for an hour. Now these are really gold right now and I want them to coordinate with the champagne gold that we added on the line. So what I did was I got a paintbrush and I added just one coat of this metallic champagne gold to the feet. That way it toned down the gold just a little bit and it also helps to color coordinate the feet and the line together. Once they were painted, I let them dry for an hour. Now it's time to attach the feet to my container. So I flipped it upside down and I got some E6000. I added the E6000 to the wood feet and I placed all of these wood feet on the bottom of the container and I spaced them out evenly. Once they were in place, I let them dry overnight. Look at how pretty this container is now, you guys. It is gorgeous. I knew it had potential when I saw it at the thrift store. <music> to beautify it even further, we're gonna add some flowers into our container. But first up, we've gotta create our tape grid. So I added a few lines of tape horizontally and vertically across the top of the container. And then I gathered up my flowers. This time we're going to be using some wisteria and some peonies. I added these wisteria bunches to my container first. I love the way the wisteria just drapes. Oh, it's just so pretty. And I think it's perfect for this time of year. It's just whimsical and really bright and cheerful. And then I took my peony stems and I added those to the container as well. I wanted a large flower arrangement and that is exactly what we ended up with. I'm going to place it right here on my mantle. It fits perfectly because the container is long and thin. It fits right on top of my mantle and I love the flowers. They are again, just bright, cheerful, but they look so classy. With the additional gold feet and gold line around this container, it makes it look high end. The cutouts give this container so much personality. It looks very custom. And can you believe that we purchased it for $4.99? What a bargain. With a little creativity, we were able to transform this into a classy, elegant, expensive looking piece of decor. Sometimes I am astounded at the things that I find in my thrift store. Take for instance, these candlesticks. I found them on the floor, they were in the corner, they were super dusty and dirty, but I knew they had potential. These candlesticks are originally from the Bombay Company. They are tall, they are very heavy. The price on these candlesticks was an absolute steal. The tall one was $6.99 and the medium size was $4.99. I mean, it was a no brainer to scoop these up. Now the first thing that we need to do is clean them up. They are so dirty. The silver on it was really cloudy and slightly oxidized and the paint had been chipped on the candlestick. 
So what we're gonna do is get some Wright's Silver Cream and we're going to try it really hard to bring this silver back to its original state. I love using the Wright's Silver Cream. I use it on all of my silver pieces and it shines it right up. Now I had to put a whole lot of elbow grease into cleaning these candlesticks. But after a whole lot of scrubbing, they finally started to sparkle and shine. I cleaned up the medium sized one first and I'm going to set it side by side to the one that hasn't been cleaned yet and you can see the massive difference between the shine. I was astounded at what a little bit of elbow grease can do. It made all the difference in the world. So I repeated this exact same process on the second candlestick. I got that right silver cream and I shined it right up. The black paint was chipped and so we need to address that next. We don't want to mess with our beautiful silver that we just cleaned up so I'm going to get some blue painters tape and I'm going to tape off all of the silver on these candlesticks. Once the silver was protected, I took my candlesticks outside and I sprayed the exposed portion in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the black paint was covered up in the white paint. I went around both of the candlesticks, making sure that it was 100% coated in this paint. Once it was covered, I let it dry for one hour. Now I can remove the blue painter's tape to reveal a lighter, brighter, freshened up candlestick. Now there was one problem and that's a user error on my part. The little decorative acanthus wreaths at the bottom, I didn't tape those up super good. They were really hard to tape, so you can see some white that got onto the sides of these acanthus wreaths. So what I'm going to do to remedy that is get some gold rub and buff and a paintbrush. And I went over the edges of these raised details. I painted over the top and the sides. Once I was finished painting the rub and buff on, I got a tissue and I wiped off the excess. I continued to paint the gold rub and buff on all four sides of both of my candlesticks. The gold rub and buff masked that white paint beautifully and I actually love the two-tone of the silver and the gold together. It adds another color detail to these candlesticks, but it still coordinates together so nicely. And now we are finished with our candlesticks. You guys, these are beautiful. I cannot believe how stunning they turned out. And if you didn't want to use these as candlesticks, you could use them as weights because they are so heavy. These are so sturdy, durable, and now they are beautiful. I can use these all year long in so many different designs and so many different seasons. I just need to add a candle to the top. And now I have a beautiful piece of home decor. Our next thrift flip involves this glass bowl. It was hiding on a shelf at my thrift store and luckily for me, I found it. I loved the size, the shape, and the price of $2.99. It's pretty dirty, but that's an easy fix. Believe it or not, we are going to turn this glass bowl into a decorative jar. And every jar needs a lid. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I actually picked up two of these wood rounds. This piece and one of the cast off metal pieces from our fan are going to be transformed into our lid. So I took these two pieces outside and I sprayed them in the same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint that we've used previously. I made sure that the wood round was coated in the white spray paint as well as the decorative metal piece. I made sure that they were completely saturated in the spray paint and then I let them dry for one hour. Now that they're dry, we are going to beautify the top of the wood round instead of just leave it plain white. Hobby Lobby has such a huge variety of scrapbook paper there. They have an entire row. I selected this white and gold floral scrapbook paper. It is so, so pretty. I love the gold sheen that it has on it. What we're gonna do is we are going to Mod Podge this scrapbook paper to the top of our wood round. 
So I took my wood around and I put it over the top of the paper and then I traced around it. Then I cut it out and the circle fit beautifully over the top of my wood round. Next, I took my Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I added a liberal amount of this Mod Podge to the top of the wood round. Then I took my paper and placed it over the top of the Mod Podge. I got a kitchen scraper and I pressed it firmly to the paper. Doing this will get any air bubbles that are potentially trapped underneath the paper out and it will help it to lay flat. Then I took some more Mod Podge and I put it over the top of the scrapbook paper. I made sure that there was a lot of Mod Podge over the top. That way it was well protected. Once it was completely covered in the Mod Podge, I let it dry for two hours. Now we're gonna take that decorative topper and place it right in the center. So I got some E6000 and I ran a line of this glue all along the bottom portion of this decorative topper. Then I placed it firmly in the center of the wood round right on top of our beautiful Mod Podge decorative floral paper. Then I let it dry overnight. This lid is so, so pretty. Look at that. This was a wood round, wood round, scrapbook paper, cast off light fixture piece. <laughs> and look at how gorgeous this lid is. So what we're gonna do with this lid is place it right over the top of our thrifted container. It fits on there so nicely. And now we have a gorgeous jar. Now I'm going to place some cookies inside of my jar. I stacked them up so they were so pretty. Now this is not going to last because I have children in my home and they are going to make short work of these cookies in about five seconds flat. So it let's enjoy how beautiful these cookies are stacked up right now. They look so pretty in our jar. However, there is a variety of things that you can add to a container like this, to our jar. You could put some bath bombs in it and put it in your bathroom. You could put in some of your favorite keepsakes or some decorative pieces and put this on a shelf. And of course, you can take this lid right back off and it can be a glass bowl that you could put all kinds of things in. So this is such a versatile piece that we got for so cheap. This surf flip was affordable, it was easy to do, and it was created out of pieces that most people think had a little to no value. Our next surf flip is actually a flip slash dupe. I have been wanting to dupe this hurricane for such a long time. I saw it on the Layla Grace website. It's so classy and elegant, but it's $423 and I didn't want to pay that. So it's been on my radar for dupes for a while. And today's the day that we are going to dupe it because when I was at my thrift store, I came across this glass vase. It's an almost identical match in the shape and the size from our inspiration piece. And you can't beat the price of $4.99. That's such a great deal. So now we have our glass, we need a marble piece. Now the marble in our inspiration piece was hexagonal, but when I went to Ross, I found something even better. This scalloped marble piece is so pretty. The size and the shape of this marble piece was perfect for our glass vase. It fits in even better with my spring theme and the price was right at only $6.99. The final piece that we need are some gold feet. In the clearance section at Hobby Lobby, I found some gold knobs that were so pretty. I loved the ribbing on these knobs and they were only 69 cents a piece. Now we have all of our pieces. We are gonna start off with the marble. Now, this beautiful scalloped marble piece has some teeny tiny marble feet on it, which we do not want, so we're going to remove those. I got a putty knife and a hammer. I gently tapped on the seam where the marble feet was glued to the marble slab. These feet literally popped right off. They jumped off the marble piece. It didn't take hardly any effort at all. 
You do want to make sure that you're going nice and slow with this step because you don't want to crack the marble itself. Now that our marble feet are removed, we can add our new gold ones. I got some E6000 and I added a dab of E6000 to the gold knob and then placed it on my marble. I did this with all four of my knobs. Then I let the E6000 dry overnight. Our inspiration piece did have several more feet along the bottom, but I like my feet better because they have more detail and mine are larger, which gives our piece that same elegant characteristic. Now let's move on and spruce up our large glass vase. The inspiration vase had a gold stripe on the top and the bottom. We are going to add that same gold stripe with washi tape. Once again, washi tape is going to be our hero. Because this package came with several different shades of gold, this champagne gold right here is perfect. And it came in two different sizes. It's a thicker size and a thinner size. So what I'm gonna do is take this washi tape. I started with a thicker washi tape. I added it to the bottom of my gold vase. In order for this washi tape to lay flat, you're gonna want to pull it tightly. This will also make sure that any air bubbles that are underneath the tape will not get trapped, especially if you smooth it out while you're adding the tape. Once I got back to the starting point, I simply cut the tape. Now I have that thicker gold stripe on the bottom. I'm going to move up to the top of the vase and get the thinner tape. I repeated this process on the top of the rim. Once the washi tape had made its way all the way around the vase, I cut the tape and then made sure the tape was pressed firmly to the glass. I'm amazed at how professional this looks, you guys. It looks fantastic. And if you don't have washi tape like this, you can tape it off and paint it. So there are other options. Now, all I need to do is add my vase on top of my marble riser. This is seriously one of my favorite projects that I've done. It's classy, it's elegant. You would never know that we DIY'd it because it looks so professional. It's an almost identical match to our inspiration piece, which I will remind you was $423. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my hurricane, it was $15.73. So that is such a great deal. And what a fantastic flip. Our next flip is going to start off with a large glass bowl. The size and the shape of this bowl was fantastic and you couldn't beat the price of $6.99. I love transforming bowls because they are such a blank slate. You can go in a variety of different ways to transform them. Now, what we're gonna do first of all is give it a good wash because we don't know how long it's been at the thrift store or what is on it. And we want our design that we're going to be putting on it to adhere to the glass. I'm going to create a damask or damask, whichever way you say it, design on my Cricut Maker. I'm going to have that design cut out on some removable vinyl. I weeded away the outside of this design because it's going to be our stencil. Once that was weeded away, I cut it into individual designs and then put transfer tape over the top. Now I'm going to add these vinyl stencils to my bowl. I simply put it on there, I pressed it firmly to the bowl, and then removed the transfer tape. Once my first stencil was on, I got to my ruler and I measured out where I wanted the next one to be. Then I continued to measure and place these stencils so that they were equidistant around the perimeter of my bowl. Now that my stencils are on my bowl, you can see that there are some gaps between the stencils where the glass is exposed. We don't want any glass exposed right now, so I'm gonna get some blue painter's tape and cover that up. I taped over the exposed areas and also the bottom of the bowl. Now our bowl is prepped and ready to be frosted. We are going to be using this Krylon frosted glass. What I did was I took my bowl outside and I sprayed a light coat of this frosted glass over the exposed areas on my bowl. I made sure that this frosted glass was over each one of the stencils. Once the first light layer was on, I let it dry for 20 minutes. 
20 minutes later, I came back and did a second light coat of the frosted glass over the top. The reason why I'm doing several light coats is because I don't want any of this frosted glass to drip. So once the second coat was on, I waited an additional 20 minutes. And then finally, I came back and did a third coat. I did the exact same thing. Once each of the stencils were covered in the frosted paint, I let it dry for one hour. Now that everything's dry, I can remove the vinyl stencil and the blue painter's tape. If you don't want to use the frosted glass, you can substitute it for etching cream and you would get the exact same results. So I just continued to remove all the vinyl from off my bowl to reveal our beautiful design. Here is our beautiful bowl and you can see how big it is as I'm holding it. This is a huge bowl. You can use this in so many different ways because what we did was we put the design on the outside so you can still use the inside for food. You can do a huge salad in here. You could even use this as a punch bowl because it's so big. And of course you could put some decorative accessories and items in here as well. Bowls, like I said, are so versatile. They can go in so many different directions. So if you see them at your thrift store, pick them up because they are a blank slate and you'll be able to get a beautiful piece just like I did with minimal effort. This bowl is beautiful now, but we are going to enhance it just a little bit more. And we're going to create a base to set our bowl on. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to get a terracotta pot from Hobby Lobby. The opening at the top of this terracotta pot fits perfectly at the bottom of the bowl. And this terracotta pot was only $4.99. Instead of leaving this terracotta pot plain, we are going to create a beautiful detail to go in the center. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I went down the baking aisle and everything on the baking aisle was 40% off, which was awesome. And I came across these silicone pie crust molds. I loved this design. It looked like a rope or a little braids. And I thought, you know, if I filled these molds with hot glue, I'd be able to get a beautiful 3D design. So that's what we're gonna do. I took my mold and I filled it with hot glue. I made sure that the entire mold was full of the hot glue. And then every now and again, I give it a good shake because by doing that, you get the air bubbles that are trapped in there. Now, I wasn't able to get all the air bubbles out, but it does release some of those as you are putting the hot glue into the mold. So I continued putting it in the first one, and then I moved on to the second one, and I filled that entirely with the hot glue as well, shaking the mold as I went along. Once the second mold was completely full of the hot glue, I just needed to wait like five minutes and then I could pop these out. And they always come out so smoothly. There's never anything left behind. And I did do an additional half. So I have two and a half of these 3D hot glue designs. In order to adhere them to my bowl, I'm going to be using hot glue. So I added hot glue to the back of my 3D piece and I placed it in the center of the terracotta pot. I pressed it firmly to the pot and then I simply just continued to add hot glue to the back of the hot glue rope and then press it to the terracotta pot. Once the two long pieces were on, I took my half piece and I trimmed it to size and then filled that into that vacant space. Now I have this beautiful decal in the center of this terracotta pot. We are now going to take this outside and we're gonna spray paint it in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the bottom and the sides were covered in the spray paint. Once it had been coated in the paint, I let it dry for one hour. I flipped it over and I painted the sides again and also the inside of the bowl. Once it was completely saturated in this white spray paint, I let it dry for another hour. I do love the way that it looks now, but I think the white is a little stark and I want it to be a little more fancy for our fancy bowl. So what I'm gonna do is get some pearlescent paint that I purchased at Michael's and a sponge brush and I'm going to paint this pearl paint over the top. I painted a light coat of this on my terracotta pot 
and then I wiped off any excess with a paper towel. I cannot believe how this paint highlights all those details on the rope. And I love the pearly sheen that this paint adds. This top layer of pearlescent paint gives this a beautiful sheen and makes those details pop. Once I had painted the entire terracotta pot, I let it dry for one hour. And here is our final base pot. Isn't that sheen just so beautiful? And it highlights that rope detail. It's just so gorgeous. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my glass bowl right in the center of this, which is going to raise up my bowl and make it look more substantial. So not only is this going to beautify my bowl even further, but it's pretty enough that I could use it as a standalone bowl. I could put a floral arrangement in here. There's so many things that you could do with this terracotta bowl. So we got multiple uses today out of our glass thrifted bowl. I love the way that it looks now. It came a long way from where we found it at the thrift store. Since our first bowl turned out so beautifully, I think we should gussy up another thrifted bowl. This bowl is a wooden bowl and it's about as plain as you can get. I do love the size and the shape of this bowl and of course the price was right at $3.99. We are going to be adding some feet to this bowl. So the first thing I need to do is drill some holes in the bottom. We can do this because this bowl is wood. So what I did was I got my Athena drill and I drilled three holes equidistant from each other on the bottom of the bowl. The reason we are drilling these holes first is because we're going to be painting this bowl. And if we drill them afterwards, there is a chance that the paint will chip and we do not want that to happen. So we're drilling these holes in first. I'm going to be painting my bowl in the same paint that I used on our terracotta pot. So I took my bowl outside and first we're going to be painting the bottom of the bowl and the sides. So once the bottom and the sides were saturated in this spray paint, I let it dry for an hour. Then I flipped it over and I painted the sides once again and the inside of the bowl as well. Once everything was covered in the paint, I let it dry for another hour. Already this bowl looks so much better, but with one more additional detail, I know it will take it over the top. So I'm going to add a gold stripe to the bottom of the bowl. So I got some blue painters tape and I taped off a line. It was about three quarters inch wide that I left exposed at the bottom of the bowl. I pulled that blue painters tape really tight along the perimeter that way it would give me a sharp crisp line when I remove it. So now that the blue painter tape is on we are going to get this rub and buff in the color gold leaf and a paper towel. I added a dab of the gold rub and buff to the paper towel and then I simply wiped it on the exposed area. I added a fair amount of the rub and buff to the bowl I wanted this gold line to be solid, so I added enough rub and buff to sufficiently coat this area. Once the first layer of rub and buff was on, I let it dry for about 10 minutes. Now this is more like a wax, so you don't have to wait very long at all for things to dry, but I wanted it to be really solid gold, so after 10 minutes was up, I added a second layer of the rub and buff over the top of the first, which gave me the color saturation that I was looking for. After this second layer was on, I waited about 15 minutes and then I was able to peel away the blue painter's tape to reveal our beautiful gold stripe. The reason why I added the gold stripe to the bottom of the bowl is because if you want to put something inside the bowl, like a flower arrangement, which we may be doing in just a minute, it would cover up that gold stripe. So by adding it to the bottom of the bowl, it's very visible and you can see it easily. Now it's time to add our feet to the bottom of the bowl. If these feet look familiar, it's because we tried really hard to use them a couple weeks back, but it just didn't work out. But today it's going to work out. These feet are from Hobby Lobby and they are so beautiful. They are marble with a gold top. What I did was I simply just poked the screw through the hole. I added all three of the feet. Then I flipped it over and added the washer and the nut to each of the screws. 
to hold the feet in place. Small details like this make such a huge difference on a plain piece. These feet add elegance because they're marble. They add luxury and also add height, which makes our bowl look more substantial. This wooden serving bowl has been completely transformed from when we found it at the thrift store. It looks like you could buy it at a high-end store. It doesn't look like a wooden serving bowl that we got at the thrift store for $3.99. Now we're going to beautify it a little bit more by adding some gorgeous flowers. So the first thing I need to do is create my tape grid. So I put two lines of scotch tape vertically and two lines horizontally. And then I got some bunches of white peonies and roses. An easy way to create a floral arrangement is by purchasing flowers in bunches like these because all you need to do is bend the stem and then put them into your bowl or your container. It didn't take me long to create this arrangement and I love how the monochromatic flowers coordinate beautifully with the neutral bowl. Look at how gorgeous this floral arrangement looks in this bowl. It looks so expensive, you guys. Can you believe this was a wooden bowl that we got at the thrift store and we just filled it with some florals that were already bunched together. This did not take me very long to do at all. This was so affordable to do. And I'm going to place it on my nightstand. It looks fresh, clean, and expensive. I'm really excited about our next transformation. I guess I should say transformations because there are two of them. I came across these beautiful glass vases. There was a pair of them. I loved the size and the shape. The base had a beautiful tiered detail on it and the price was a screaming deal at $1.99 a piece. We are going to be painting these glass vases and we are not gonna be painting the outside. We are going to be painting the inside because we are gonna be adding some decorative details to the outside later on. So what I did was I got some blue painter's tape and copy paper and protected the outside of the vase. Then I took my vases outside and I sprayed the inside in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the entire inside of the vase was sprayed in the paint once both of the vases were coated on the inside with the gold spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. While the paint is drying, we are going to get our design ready. A couple weeks ago, I was organizing my paper napkins in a mesh organizer, so I had to go through all of my paper napkins, and I found these beautiful blue and white floral napkins that I had purchased a long time ago at Home Goods for only $2.99. And I knew that they would be perfect for this project. Like our cardstock roses that we put on our tray, we are going to be cutting out these flowers individually. The first thing I did was I removed the two ply portion of the napkin and then I got my scissors out and started cutting away these flowers. Now this took a lot of effort to do and it was really time consuming so I enlisted the help of my daughter she came and helped me cut out all these flowers, which was fun to sit and chit chat with her while we cut all these out. Once I had my desired amount of flowers, I laid them out and then I got my vase, which had been dried and I removed the paper on it. Then I got a sponge brush and some Mod Podge. I painted the Mod Podge onto the vase and then I simply placed my flowers right into the Mod Podge and then smoothed them out. I continued to add the Mod Podge and place the flowers. I love the way that this looks. It carries those beautiful florals from the top all the way to the bottom. After all of my flowers had been Mod Podged onto the vase, I let everything dry for two hours. The reason why I let this first layer of Mod Podge dry for two hours is because the napkin is so thin that if I added the top layer right now, it would just tear the napkin. So we're gonna let it dry and then after two hours, I came back and I added the top layer of Mod Podge and I put the Mod Podge all over the vase. And then I let it dry for an additional two hours. Look at how gorgeous these vases are now. They are unique, 
They are one of a kind. I could see a vase like this on a very expensive website or in a high-end store. I personally haven't seen anything like this. Now, of course, to finish it off, we've got to put some flower arrangements in our vases. So I got some hydrangea in blue and orangey cream along with some iris and gladiolas. And I simply just place them inside the center of our vase. I mimicked both floral arrangements to look just like each other. Check these out now. Look at how beautiful these look. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. And to think that these started out as the $1.99 thrifted vases that we added paint and napkins to, and that was it. So it was a really affordable way to create some unique custom pieces. I can use these vases all year long, and all I need to do to theme them into a different season is to change the florals inside. I'm gonna take each one of these and I'm gonna put them on the nightstands in my bedroom to add a little bit of a fall touch to the space. What makes them fall is the color of the orangish cream hydrangeas, and it's still in keeping with the blue and white theme that I have in my room. So I think we should go on a little shopping trip and see what they have. Now we have our pieces from the thrift store to transform. We're gonna start off with this lovely brown tray. I purchased this tray for $5.99. The tray actually has really good bones. I love the size of it. And it just has a couple dings and nicks, but the brown faux leather has got to change. The first thing that we're gonna do is wash it down. We need to wipe it and get all of the dust and debris off. We do not know how long it's been at the thrift store or what's been on it. And a clean surface is an ideal surface for optimal paint adhesion. So now that it's clean and dry, we're gonna take it outside and I'm going to spray paint it in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed my tray so it was 100% covered in the spray paint. I got around each of the sides and the inside corners and I also did the bottom inside of the tray. Once the tray was completely saturated in the paint, I let it dry for three hours. Already this tray is like a complete 180. It is so light and bright, and the white color makes it look fresh and clean. Let's address the nail head trim along the perimeter. Now, if I were to have taped off each one of these nail heads, it would have taken me forever. So I painted them white, and now we're gonna go back over them with some rub and buff. Now I tell you, this tube of gold rub and buff is the tube that just keeps on giving. So all you need is just a little bit. So I took the gold rub and buff and a paintbrush, and I added the gold rub and buff to each one of the nail head trims. I simply went around the entire perimeter and changed it from white to gold. What I love about the rub and buff is that it has an antique look to it. So there's some color variation which gives it a unique look. Once I was done adding gold to each of the nail head trims, I moved on to the inner circles that were metal and I added some rub and buff to those as well. This gold accent definitely elevates the look of this tray. I was scrolling online, looking at trays, and I noticed that all the ones that I loved had some kind of detail on the bottom of the tray, so we're gonna do the same thing. I chose a cherry blossom detail. I just had my Cricut Maker cut out this design and I'm using a champagne gold vinyl. I didn't even use transfer tape on this, I just peeled the vinyl away from the backing and I placed it in the center of my tray. Then I got my scraper tool and I pressed out all the air bubbles and this also helps to adhere the vinyl to the tray. 
Now I have a stunning design that transforms this tray from plain to classy and high-end. The white color is going to make everything that I put on top of this tray pop. It's the perfect color choice. The gold accents are an elegant touch. This tray transformation is remarkable. What do you guys think about this decorative box? It's pretty questionable, right? Well, we're gonna clean it up and make this pretty penny shine. So this box was $1.99, which is a fantastic price. It's a great size. I love the metal hardware on the corners and the latch in the front. First up, we are going to give this thing a good washing, which is a very good thing that I decided to do because, oh man, was this thing dirty. I'm talking black residue dirty. This is what the rag looked like when I was finished cleaning it up. That's pretty gross. So once it was clean and shiny, I took some blue painter's tape and I taped off the metal brackets on the side, the latch in the front, and the hinges in the back. Then I took my box outside and I sprayed it in the same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint that I used on my tray. I made sure that this box was completely covered in the paint. I did the sides and the top. I made sure that it was 100% saturated and then I let it dry for three hours. My plan from the beginning was to have my box coordinate with my tray. So in order to do that, we're going to use the same rub and buff on the hinges and on the latch in the front and on the side corner brackets. That way the gold coordinates with the gold that's on the nail head trim on my tray. So again, I took my rub and buff and a paintbrush and I put the gold on the latch on the corner pieces and the hinges in the back. A paintbrush is a great way to get the rub and buff on there because you can place it exactly where you want it. Next, I created the exact same cherry blossom decal in a smaller size on my Cricut. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to place the cherry blossom branches on the corners of my boxes. That way the branches just kind of meander around the box and make it look unique and special. So I placed the first cherry blossom branch on the side and I wrapped it around to the front. Then I placed another decal on the back corner. Then I added the final cherry blossom branch to the top of the box. I used my scraper tool to get all the air bubbles out and to make sure that the vinyl was adhered well to the box. Once I got to this point, I looked at my box and I decided I needed to add just one more detail. You know, I just can never leave well enough alone. Well, that's kind of how I was with this box. So I went back to my rub and buff and my paintbrush and I decided to add more of the rub and buff along the raised edges, all along the top perimeter of the box and also along the bottom. I'm really glad that I did this. I think that it's an additional detail that makes this box look high end. All finished. I mean, come on, look at this thing. You would never know that it started off as a dirty, I'm talking really dirty, piece from the thrift store. All we did was we gave it a good wash. We painted it. We added some gold touches to it and a beautiful vinyl detail. I just love the way that my box and my tray coordinate together. They look like they have always been best friends. What do you think about that tray? It's in need of a makeover, I would say. Let me give you a closer look. It has a lovely scenic picture of a pheasant in a field. This would be fantastic at a hunting lodge, but it's not really working for me. <laughs> but what is working for me is the octagonal shape of the tray and the size is perfect. The price is also great at $3.99. I think our first move is to change the color of this tray. So I'm going to wipe it down and make sure it's really clean. I don't know how long it's been at the thrift store or what is on it, so we wanna make sure that it's really clean so that the paint adheres really well to the tray. I took my tray outside and I sprayed it in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed the entire tray and said goodbye to our pheasants. 
I wanted to make sure everything was covered completely in the white paint. I did two coats of paint. Once the first coat was dry, I painted a second coat and then let it dry overnight. Because we said goodbye to our pheasants and landscape, I want to replace the bottom of the tray with something lighter, brighter, and more fitting for spring. I found a gift bag at Ross. It's a set of two. And the gift bag that we're going to be using is the white bag with the gold roses. Now, the reason why I'm using a gift bag instead of let's say scrapbook paper or wrapping paper or some other thinner material is because that there is an indentation in the tray where that original design is. So when I go to Mod Podge my paper onto the tray, if it was too thin, you'd still be able to see those bumps and grooves. So the gift bag being thicker will smooth everything out and make it look like one flat surface. The first step is to take apart the bag. I simply pulled it apart at the seams where it was glued together, then I flattened it out. Next, I put my tray on top of the gift bag, and then I traced around it with a pencil. Then I measured the thickness of the tray walls, which was a quarter inch, and came in a quarter inch on my octagonal template. I used my ruler and pencil to trace out the correct size. I placed my gift bag on top of a self-healing mat and then I got out my Cricut rotary cutter. The rotary cutter is fantastic for this project because it's going to give me a straight cut on each side. Once I cut out my octagon, I did a quick dry fit to see if the octagon would fit inside my tray and luckily it fit in there perfectly. To adhere the gift bag octagon to the bottom of the tray, I'm going to be using some Mod Podge. I got a sponge brush and the Mod Podge and I added a liberal amount to the bottom of the tray. I made sure that each part of the base of the tray was completely covered in the Mod Podge, especially in the corners because I want the corners and edges of my paper to adhere really well to the tray. Next, I took my gift bag octagon and I placed it in the center of my tray. Then I took my large Cricut scraper and I pressed out all of the air bubbles. You can also use a kitchen scraper or a credit card for this step. You just wanna make sure that all of those bubbles are pressed out from underneath the paper. By removing the air trapped underneath, your surface will be smooth and flat. I waited about 20 minutes for this first layer of Mod Podge to dry, and then I came back and I added a top layer of Mod Podge. Again, I added a generous amount to make sure that each part of the paper was covered in the Mod Podge. Once everything was covered, I let it dry for several hours. Isn't this tray stunning? What a transformation. It started out in pretty questionable shape, but by simply painting it white and adding a new updated surface to the bottom of the tray, it makes it look brand new. To theme this tray into spring, I added a clear cake stand. I placed a large ceramic bunny on top of the cake stand and then put a cloche over everything. This is such a beautiful display piece that is perfect for the changing season. I love decorating with glass jars, so anytime I see them at my thrift store, I scoop them up, especially when the price is $9.99. And guess what? I have an identical one, an identical match. Isn't that crazy? And let me tell you, I spent a lot more than $9.99 on this jar, so now I have a pair. I decorate with glass jars all year long. I do it in the spring, summer, fall, especially at Christmas time, and there are so many ways that you can decorate your glass jars. Let me show you a quick, easy one right now. So what I'm gonna do is take my glass jar, and I have a pitcher of water. I'm gonna pour it into my jar. And then I have some flowers. These are flowers that I just picked from outside. So pretty and all you need to do is take fresh flowers and put them inside of the water in your jar. 
just put in as many as you want. You can use a variety of different colors that would go along with a color scheme that you were having for a party. You could get some pretty flowers that coordinated with the specific season that we're in. So I'm just gonna add a whole lot of flowers to my jar. And that's it, we're done. How simple is that? But look at how pretty this set of three glass jars looks. In the spring, I put some bunnies in a jar. In the summer, I had a bee-themed tablescape and I put some bee-themed items in my jar. In the fall, I put in some pumpkins and acorns in jars. And of course, at Christmas time, you can do so many things. I put in little village houses, bottle brush Christmas trees. I even put a Santa in a glass jar. So if you see a jar at your thrift store or if it's on sale somewhere, scoop it up because it is a versatile piece of decor that you can use all year long. Our next thrift flip involves this $2.99 container that I purchased at the thrift store. This container is actually two pieces. There's a smaller container inside of a larger container. I'm guessing that you could put something down below or around the edges to beautify it. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to take the smaller container out of the larger container and we are going to transform the larger container. Right now, it is a pretty sad plastic container, but it's going to be unrecognizable when we are finished with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap the outside in some copy paper and blue painter's tape. Stick with me, we're gonna be painting the inside of this container. So what I'm gonna do is take this outside and spray just the inside in this gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the inside of this container was completely covered in this gold spray paint and then I let it dry for one hour. While the paint was drying, I thought this would be a great time to create a botanical design in my Cricut design space. I had my Cricut maker cut out this design on some removable vinyl. So now I have my design and the paint is dry. So what I'm gonna do is simply remove the copy paper and the blue painter's tape and then I'm going to put these botanical vinyl pieces on the outside of my container. I made these botanicals in a variety of different sizes and I put them sporadically throughout the outside of this container. Now I'm going to take my container back outside and this time I need to protect the inside of my container. So I got a paper plate and I popped that right over the top. And then I got some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint and I painted the outside of the container. I made sure the container was completely covered in the spray paint and then I let it dry for two hours. I wanted this to be completely dry before we removed the removable vinyl. So once it was dry, it was so easy to peel those pieces away from this container. And what it revealed behind was the gold paint that we painted on the inside of the container earlier. I continued to remove all of the vinyl from the container, which provided a beautiful, natural botanical design. If you don't have a vinyl cutter, there are so many other options that you can use. You can pick up some stickers from the Dollar Tree or Michaels. You could use a stencil and put that on the outside spray it and then remove the stencil to create a design. There's a lot of options. So don't feel like you need to have a vinyl cutter in order to do this project. But already you guys, look at how stunning this transformation was. It was so easy, it involved minimal steps and it was super affordable. To beautify it even further, what we're gonna do is add some flowers to the inner container. So again, we're gonna start off with that tape grid. I put a few lines vertically and horizontally over the top. This time I'm gonna go with some pink toned flowers. I grabbed a bunch of these beautiful peonies. Of course, I bent the stem to get it the right size. And then I placed all of these gorgeous flowers into this inner container. Once my flowers were in place, I just picked up that container and placed it right inside of the decorative container. 
And here we go. Here is the final look. Can you guys believe that we purchased this container for $2.99 at the thrift store? Look at it now. It doesn't even resemble what it was originally. The detail around the outside of this container is so cool. And to think that we did it just with paint. Paint on the inside, a decal, and paint on the outside. So if you find some dull pieces, but they are affordable, you can always transform them into something magical. Whenever I see trays in my thrift store, I scoop them up. Trays are one of those versatile items that you can use in so many different ways. I found this square tray and it was only $2.99, which is an amazing price. Now this tray is far from perfect. It had some scratches on the bottom and then there was also a large gap in between the two tones of wood. So there are a couple things that need to be addressed. We're gonna start off by fixing that large gap. I got some wood filler and I pressed it in between the gap. There was actually a few different gaps along the bottom of the tray. So I filled those in and then I let the wood filler dry for 12 hours. Once it was dry, I could sand it down smooth. Once the wood filler and the scratches had been smoothed out, I simply wiped it clean with a damp towel. I wanted to add an additional detail to the top of the tray. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I went over to the ribbon section and I found a spool of wood beads. I purchased those and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these beads to the top rim of the tray. To adhere them to the tray, I got some E6000. I put that down on the top first and then I went over it with some hot glue. Then I took my strand of beads and I placed it in the glue. The E6000 will hold the beads in place long term, but while we're waiting for the E6000 to dry, the hot glue will keep it in place. Once my first line of beads had been put in place, I snipped off the end and then I did the exact same thing to the remaining three sides of the tray. I got that E6000, I put it along the rim and then went over it with the hot glue and then put the beads into the glue. Once all the beads had been placed on the rim of the tray, I let it dry overnight. Because we have such a variety of different kinds and colors of wood on this tray, we are going to make it cohesive and paint it in a white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. You guys know I love white paint and I think it makes everything just look fresh and bright. So once my tray and the beads had been completely coated in this white spray paint, I let it dry for an hour, then I flipped it over and did the opposite side. I wanted to add some feet to my tray. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I went down the knob and pull aisle and I found these beautiful marble knobs that had a gold detail on it. And they were on sale too, which is always a great thing. While I was in process of adding these marble knobs to the bottom of the tray, I tried to remove the screw and guess what? <laughs> the screw had been drilled in to the marble. So there was no way it was coming out. So after 15 seconds of panic, I came up with plan B. And luckily I had some leftover doll heads. These are wood doll heads that I purchased at Michael's. And these are going to be our brand new feet. So I'm going to paint them. I took them outside and I sprayed them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once these wood rounds had been completely coated in the gold spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. I flipped my tray over, I got some E6000 and I put it on the wood rounds and then placed it on all four corners of the bottom of my wood tray. Once they were in place, I let this dry overnight. Now these gold feet ended up to be a happy accident because the wood rounds match our wood rounded beads. So they coordinate. So I guess the moral of the story is if things don't work out in the first place, maybe there's a reason or maybe there's something better that you need to use. I love the way that this $2.99 thrifted tray turned out. The beads at the top are so beautiful and I do love the feet. 
I'm going to layer a few items into the center of this tray. I'm going to start with a plate. To the center of the plate, I'm going to put a mirrored tray. And then I'm going to add a beautiful jar with a candle inside. You can put decorative items in here so easily. You could also do a really shallow floral arrangement, which would be so pretty. So in the end, this tray ended up to be a top notch flip. There are rare occasions when I come across items in my thrift store and I know I have found a gem and I don't want to do anything to it. For instance, this stunning tray. This glass tray is so beautiful. The details are simply remarkable. I love the muted pastel colors. The green and light pink give it an understated elegance. And I was blown away at the price. It was only $2.99. That is an absolute steal. And all I had to do was clean it up with some soap and water. I can use this tray in a variety of different ways. I can have it face up where the cut glass is at the top, or I can flip it over so that the smooth side is facing up. This is what I'm going to be doing right now. With the smooth side facing up, I can add some tasty food to the top. And then you can put a cloche over the top to make it look even fancier. Now I plan on keeping this, but a lot of the trays that I see at my thrift store, I use as gifts. If you gave this to one of your friends, they would never know that you purchased this for $2.99 at your thrift store. So not only are you getting a beautiful piece, but you are reusing and recycling someone else's trash, which I absolutely love. Another item that I have really good luck at finding at my thrift store are frames. I have found so many great frames in the past. So when I saw this frame, I knew that it would be perfect. The size was great. And I really liked the mats. There were a lot of mats that were stacked on top of each other in a variety of different colors. And of course, we love the price of $9.99. Now, is this frame perfect? No, it does have some scratches and some dings in it. I also wasn't a huge fan of the stripes that were along the frame. But again, these are all easy fixes. So what we need to do first is remove everything from our frame. So I took the back off, then I removed the mat, and finally removed the glass. I took my frame outside, and this time I'm going to be spraying it in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the sides and the top were fully covered in the spray paint. This paint covered up those stripes that were on the frame and smoothed over the imperfections. Once this frame was fully covered in the gold spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Like I said before, one of the things that I really loved about this artwork was the mats. So because we love them and because they are in such great shape, we're going to highlight them by adding a cherry blossom detail. So I got some cardstock sticker paper and I created a cherry blossom branch and multiple cherry blossom flowers in my Cricut design space and then had my Cricut Maker cut them out. I took my stickers and I positioned them on the corner of my mat. I added one cherry blossom branch to the lower corner of the mat and then added one cherry blossom branch to the upper corner of the mat. Then I sporadically added the cherry blossom flowers to the areas surrounding my branches. I like this flurry of cherry blossoms. It looks like these blossoms are being blown in the wind. The original artwork is a tulip, which is very nice, but we are going to upgrade that to a print that's from my new spring collection on my website. This print is so pretty. It's a landscape scenery. I love the vibrant green tones in this print. It's so serene, and it's going to be a perfect focal point in my frame. Now, one problem that I did have with removing this tulip print was that it was all stuck together, like glued together the mats and the artwork itself. So what we're gonna have to do is add our artwork over the top. So I cut out one more mat. I got some double-sided tape, 
I placed it on the tulip and then put my new mat over the top. Then I took my gorgeous spring print. I added some more double-sided tape and pressed that to the center. And then I added more double-sided tape around the original artwork and then pressed my new mat all the way around. Now that my mat and my artwork are in place, I'm going to add a few more of those cherry blossom stickers to the new mat. I added a few more to the two corners, which ties the artwork together and makes it cohesive. The reason why I went with a white sticker was because I wanted a subtle detail, a detail that you had to look closely to because you don't want to detract from the main focal point, which is the spring art print. So having these cherry blossoms and the branches in this white tone is the quiet, elegant detail I was looking for. So now that everything is in place, I'm simply going to add everything back into the frame. I added the glass first, and then I put in my new art and mat. All right, you guys, here's a very sad story. When I was putting the art back into the frame, I pushed too hard and the glass broke. So, boo. <laughs> but instead of sulking, we are going to soldier forth and <laughs> This frame is now going to be an open face frame, which is fantastic because now we don't have a glare. You can see everything. However, I do think I'm going to cut a piece of plexiglass and put that in there so I know that my artwork and everything is protected. But you know what? Things are not perfect. Things break. Things don't always go my way, but that's okay. We're going to pivot and it's going to be just fine. So what I'm gonna do is put my beautiful artwork on my fireplace mantle. This artwork is the right size. The mats are beautiful. The extra cherry blossom branches and flowers are stunning. They are a lovely spring feature. And of course, the print is classy and adds the pop of color we want for this revitalizing time of year. When I came across the silverware caddy at my thrift store, I knew that it had potential, and for only $6.99, I knew I had to give it a try. Now, this silverware caddy is pretty rustic, and it's missing a big chunk out of the finial that's on the top, but that's all right, we can fix it. We are gonna start by changing the color. Now, the color right now has some silver and black on it. We are going to switch it and paint it white. So I got some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the entire perimeter was coated in the spray paint as well as the inside and also the top finial. Once the entire caddy was covered in the spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. It already looks so much better. We are gonna take it one step further and add a bit of a glaze to the top. I have this champagne metallic paint. I purchased it at Michael's. This paint is going to provide a lovely sheen and glow to our caddy. I got a sponge brush and I began to paint this champagne paint over the top of the caddy. Once the first side was painted, I got a napkin and wiped off the paint. You're left with a more muted white color, but it also enhances the detail that's on the spoons. I think they look like spoons. I don't know if you think they look like spoons, but in the center of these spoons is this really pretty detail and you couldn't see it before, but by adding this champagne paint over the top, it highlights it so much better. Once the champagne paint had been painted on all four sides and wiped off, I let it dry for an hour. We are not done yet. We're gonna add one more detail and it's going to be a ribbon. I found this white ribbon with gold stripes at Michael's. We are gonna be using this ribbon to weave in and out of the spoons to create a beautiful basket weave. I started in the center and I took the end of the ribbon and I threaded it through one of the spoons and then I just went back and forth in and out between the spoons. I did this around the entire perimeter. I really love this detail. It makes it look like an elegant basket weave. Once the ribbon had made it all the way back around, I tied it into a bow in the center. Isn't this so cute now? I love the way that this looks. 
You could definitely use it as a silverware caddy. You could put it on a fall tablescape or a buffet. The neutral color is fantastic. You can use it all year long and you can switch out the ribbon for different seasons. However, we are not going to use our silverware caddy for silverware. We are going to use it for a container for a beautiful flower arrangement. I picked up a whole bunch of flowers at Michael's. All the fall flowers were 50% off. I got some cream flowers, white flowers, and some tall white leaves. Even though our caddy has four different segments, we need a few more for our flower arrangement. So we're gonna create a tape grid. I got some scotch tape and I did two lines vertically and two lines horizontally to create some more spaces for our floral arrangement. And then I took my flowers, I bent the stems and I added them inside of the grids. I placed all of my flowers in various areas along with the leaves and berries. The final addition is this adorable white pumpkin pick. This cute little white pumpkin is going to be a great addition. It will definitely theme this arrangement into autumn. And here's our final floral arrangement. Isn't that just the cutest thing? I love the way that we change the color on our silverware caddy. Going from the darker black and silver to this white and champagne gold with this ribbon was a great choice. The flowers inside are so pretty. I love the neutral shades of white and creams and the little pumpkin pick adds that autumn detail that we need. I'm going to place my floral arrangement on top of a Marble Lazy Susan in the center of my breakfast table. I'm also going to add a few pumpkins to either side. With a little creativity, we were able to turn a silverware caddy into a beautiful container for a stunning fall flower arrangement. By thinking outside of the box, we were able to make a unique and beautiful arrangement that was very affordable and one of a kind. Sometimes when I'm shopping at my thrift store, I come across pieces and I'm like, why did somebody give this away? Right, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, I found an amazing treasure. Look at this gorgeous blue and white ginger jar. I love the size, the detail. The color is so saturated and beautiful. I loved the blue. In fact, there wasn't anything that I didn't like about this jar. And the icing on the cake was that it was only $6.99. So I grabbed that so fast and I brought it home. Don't worry, we are not gonna do anything to this jar. We are gonna leave it as is, but we are going to add some embellishments. So I headed over to Hobby Lobby and I was looking for some white ribbon. The ribbon wasn't on sale in the regular section, so I went over to the holiday section and all the Christmas was 50% off and I found a spool of this white velvet ribbon. So pretty, it was only $5.99 with 50% off. It was only $3, so it was a great bargain. So here's a tip. If you can't find what you're looking for or it's not on sale in your regular everyday section, I always find some basic pieces in the holiday section. So if you wanna find something on sale, look in that holiday section or the clearance section. A lot of times you'll find some things there. So to go along with my ribbon, I needed some fall leaves. So I headed over to the fall section a few aisles over and I found a package of these sparkly leaves. They were 40% off, so this package was just over a dollar. I cut a long segment of this velvet ribbon and then I got my sparkly leaves. They are stickers and so all I needed to do was remove the backing over the sticker part and then I pressed it on the ends of the ribbon. Because the knob on my jar is just teeny tiny, I knew that my ribbon would not stay on it. So I got some double-sided tape and I placed it on the knob and then I put the center of the ribbon around the tape. Then I simply tied my ribbon into a bow. You could leave it like this, but we are going to add just a little bit more fall embellishments. When I was at Michael's, all of the florals were 40% off in the fall section. So I got a stem of white leaves. I took one of these branches off and then I got a stem of blueberries and I put that over the white leaves. 
Then I got a segment of floral wire, wrapped it around my stem of leaves and berries, and then I took the excess wire that was coming off of the top, wrapped it around the knob, and then tucked it under the ribbon that was around the top of the jar. And then I twisted the wire in the back. You cannot even see the wire that's holding these leaves and berries onto the jar. It just disappears. I love this seasonal touch that we added to the center of the bow. And just like that, we have taken our beautiful ginger jar and themed it into fall. This was so easy to do, but I absolutely love the way that this looks. You could use this technique for every season. You could put some snowflakes on the end of the ribbons for winter. You could do Easter eggs for spring. You could do anchors or flowers for summer. This is such a versatile technique. And again, you could customize the florals that you put in the center as well. I've also done this technique with some pumpkins. I got a navy blue ribbon and then I added some gold leaves to the bottom. So this is a fun way to create some unique custom ribbon for the changing seasons and holidays. Now I'm gonna take my jar and I'm gonna add it to my tray and I'm gonna put the pumpkins on it. I'm gonna put a stem of leaves. I'm gonna add an acorn and it just finishes off this table so beautifully. I love this centerpiece. We were able to create it with items that we purchased from the thrift store that with a little bit of embellishment took these irregular thrifted pieces into spectacular items of home decor. I needed two large frames. I didn't care what artwork was inside. I was more interested in the frame. I found these on the wall. I really loved the streamline look of the frame and the price was right at $9.99 a piece. So as lovely as these prints are, we are going to be swapping them out. So the first thing I needed to do was remove everything from the frame. So I removed the tape on the back and pulled out the backing with the print on it and then removed the glass as well. So I just had the wood frames. The frame color was similar, but it was not identical. So it needed to be painted and I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum country gray chalk paint. I took my frames outside and I sprayed them in this paint. I made sure that the outside of the frame was painted and the inside was painted as well. And of course the front of, once everything was painted in this country gray spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. While the paint was drying, I needed to create some new art to go in my frames. I created a set of eight because we were going to be creating a gallery in each of these frames. So instead of having a whole bunch of frames all over the wall, we're gonna use these two frames, but we're gonna put four prints in each frame. And the reason why I'm going with this color scheme is that we are going to be making over my twin boys' bedroom. You guys know my boys, they're awesome. They're actually away at a church camp for the week right now. So while they're gone, I thought I'd work on their room so they had a surprise when they got home. So now that I have my prints done, I wanted to have some mats. So I got some cardstock, just white cardstock, and instead of cutting them out, because eight is a lot of mats to cut out and you want them to be identical, I had my Cricut Maker cut them out for me. That way I knew they were uniform. If you're handy with scissors and a ruler and feel like you can do it that way, then totally cut them out by hand. All right, so now we have our prints and we are not gonna keep those prints. We need to cover them up. So we need a neutral backdrop. I'm going to be using some gift wrap. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. I love this color. It's like a beige and a white stripe. It's a perfect backdrop for our framed art. So what I did is I got some Mod Podge and a sponge brush, and I added the Mod Podge to the top of the original art print. Then I took my wrapping paper, which I had cut into the exact same size it needed to go over the top, and I placed it over the top of the Mod Podge. Then I got a scraper tool and I pressed those two pieces together. 
Doing this also removes any of the air bubbles that might be trapped inside so that the paper can lay flat. Once the paper was in place, I let the Mod Podge dry for two hours. Now I have all of my pieces, so let's assemble. I'm going to take my art print and then get the mat. I'm gonna get some double-sided tape and place it over the top of the paper and then put my mat over the top of that. I cut my mat to fit exactly over a eight and a half by 11 size piece of copy paper. That way I didn't have to do any additional cutting. I repeated this process with all eight of my art prints. Then I took the backing that was covered in the gift wrap and I added my prints to the top. I spread them out equally. Then I got some hot glue and I hot glued these prints directly to the backing. I did this with the remaining art pieces until my collage of modern landscapes were in place. And then I did the exact same thing with the other four pieces on the second piece of art. And now all I need to do is slide them back into the original frames. I hung one above each of their beds in their bedroom and I absolutely love the way that these turned out. And you guys, we did not use any white or any gold spray paint on this project. Uh, way out of my comfort zone, who am I right now? I don't know, but I think it looked Beautiful. I loved this gray color scheme with the muted color tone. And they started out as a pretty questionable a $9.99 thrifted piece. Here's one critique I'm going to make on my art pieces. The backing to begin with, because it had been at the thrift store for who knows how long, was a little wavy. And so using the Mod Podge and then putting the wrapping paper over the top, you do see some lumps and some bumps which I don't particularly like. So if this is something that would bother you, I would suggest using some double-sided tape. I think it would lay flatter that way, but it is what it is at this point, and I actually think that those lumps and bumps add character, and I'm positive my boys won't care at all. I love it when the flowers start blooming in the springtime. It's like the world is coming back to life. So we are going to really take advantage of beautiful spring flowers today. We're gonna to start off with a urn. This is actually an urn that I did a thrift flip on. In a previous video, I added a thicker base to the bottom and then I painted it white and added a stippling effect to make it look like it's concrete. We are gonna need floral foam for this arrangement, so I'm going to hot glue the bottom of the floral foam and then add it inside of my urn. The reason why I'm hot gluing it is because the urn is really shallow and I wanted the floral foam to stay in place. Then I added some moss over the top and I attached the moss and the floral foam using some floral pins. I started off adding in my greenery. I have this really cute floppy greenery. It looks like the top of carrots to me, so I thought it would be perfect for this arrangement. I added several of those around the base, and then I also have some pretty pastel green lamb's ear that I'm going to add in as well. Next, I added in these really cute stems of artichokes, and I did buy these at, at home. I placed those so they draped off to the side. Next, I added in these tall white flowers. I have no idea what these are. When I bought them at Michael's, the tag on the stem just said stem. So I don't know what they are, but I absolutely love them. So for all of you floral aficionados out there that know what this is, leave me a comment and let me know the name of this flower. So I added a few of those in and then I placed in some tulips and a variety of other white and pastel pink florals. To really theme this into spring, I'm going to add a cute little bird's nest with some eggs. I purchased this bird's nest at Michael's. I hot glued a stem onto the bottom to turn it into a pick. And then I placed it into my floral arrangement. Once my bird's nest was in place, I added these cute little white and gold speckled eggs. I hot glued the underside of them and then placed them inside of 
the nest. Now every nest needs a bird, so I have this cute gray sparkly bird. I purchased it at the Dollar Tree. To make this bird stay in my floral arrangement, I took another one of those wire stems, I bent the top, and then there's a little clip on the bottom of the bird. I just clipped it right on to the wire stem, and then I poked it into the foam. I cannot even tell you how much I love this floral arrangement. It is so cute and so perfect for spring. All we did was we just took a regular floral arrangement. We used some pastel flowers and then we added a cute little element like this nest bird and eggs. By doing that, it just takes it over the top. I was on the Etsy website and I saw this adorable clock. It was so whimsical and unique. I loved the chinoiserie birds. It comes in at a price of $78, which isn't outrageous, but I think that we can recreate one for less. So I headed to the thrift store in the hopes that I could find a similar clock and I found one. This clock is almost an identical replica and the price on mine was only $6.99. The orange stain on this clock needs to be changed and then there's the hardware. There is a pull on the drawer that's copper and the handle on the top is a darker antique color. They do not match so we are going to change those as well. First up there is a latch that's on the side so we are going to remove that so we can paint our clock. I got my drill and I took that latch right off. I began to remove the decorative pull off the drawer. It was nailed into the drawer, so I thought maybe I could just kind of shimmy it off, and I broke it. <laughs> I just, it snapped right in half. So at this point, all I could do was get my needle nose pliers and pull the rest of it off. Once I had the knobs off, I got a putty knife and I jammed it underneath the other part of the hardware and just pried it up. So out of necessity, we will eventually be getting a new knob for the drawer. I didn't know my own strength on this one. All right, so now that we have those parts taken care of, what we're gonna do is remove the clock mechanism from our clock. It had some spring hinges, so it just popped right out. Because I learned a very valuable lesson on the drawer pole, we are not gonna take anything else off. We are gonna leave the handle and the hinges on the clock so we are going to tape those off. So I just got some blue painter's tape and I taped off the hinges and the handle. I got some paper and I put it inside with a little drawer and then got some blue painter's tape and put it over the top because we wanna protect the velvet inside. Now everything's protected, it's time to paint it. Now you guys, <laughs> we are going out on a limb today. We are painting this clock black, yes black it's not white it's not gold it's black we are going out of our comfort zone so i took my clock outside and i began to spray it in this black semi-gloss rustoleum spray paint you guys the minute i started spraying this paint my stomach dropped i was like oh i hope i'm making the right decision but i had already started so i just jumped right in and sprayed the entire clock in this black spray paint I did the front of the drawer and all around the clock. I did the top, the sides, the bottom. Once it was completely covered in this black spray paint, I let it dry for an hour. Now that everything's dried, we can remove the blue painter's tape. So I just pulled that off of the hinges and the handle and the drawer. Now we're going to put some blue painter's tape back onto the clock. I put it around the hinges and the handle because what we're going to do is get some gold rub and buff and a rag and we're going to add this gold rub and buff to the metal hinges, handle, and hook. I rubbed this rub and buff on the hinges first. I made sure that they were fully covered in the rub and buff. Then I moved on to the handle. I got the base of the handle itself. I made sure that all of it was covered. Once the handle was finished, I moved on to the latch and the screws that we had previously removed. I put the rub and buff all over the latch and the screws. And the nice thing about using the rub and buff is that it's more like a wax. So you don't have to wait more than five minutes to have it dry. 
So after that time was up, I could remove that blue painter's tape to reveal these beautiful gold metal hardware pieces. I like the way that these look now. Our metal pieces look antiqued and they match color wise. Our inspiration clock had a beautiful chinoiserie bird design. Now we are not gonna go that bright, but what we are gonna do is keep it classic. So I had this book of scrapbook paper that I purchased from Ross a while ago. Inside was this black and cream damask or damask, however you say it, print with a beautiful sheen on it. And these are the scrapbook pieces that we are going to use to cover our clock. I measured the front of my clock to get the correct size. Then I cut my paper to get the correct circle cut out. I placed the paper on the front of the clock, opened it up and traced the circle so I got an exact size. Then I cut out the circle from the paper once I was done, I put it back on the front of my clock and it was a perfect fit. Then I simply cut the scrapbook paper to fit on all the other surfaces on my clock. To adhere the scrapbook paper to my clock, I'm going to be using some Mod Podge and a sponge brush. I painted on the Mod Podge on the front of my clock. Then I took my decorative paper and put it in the Mod Podge. Then I got a scraper tool and I pressed the paper firmly to the wood to make sure that it laid flat. And also this will remove any air bubbles that might be trapped underneath the paper. Then I moved on to the drawer. I did the same thing. I got the Mod Podge. I painted it all over the drawer front and then smoothed it out with my scraper. Next step is to do the sides. So I just repeated the same process. I got the Mod Podge and the sponge brush and I painted it on the sides. I put the rectangular piece on the top first and then moved down to the second rectangular piece on the bottom. Once those had been pressed firmly to the side, I flipped it to the other side and did the exact same thing over there. I added the Mod Podge first. I placed the paper into the Mod Podge then pressed it firmly to the clock with the scraper. Now all of the decorative paper has been Mod Podged onto my clock. Once it was in place, I let it dry for one hour. Now it's time to paint on the top layer of Mod Podge. So I simply just got my sponge brush and the Mod Podge and I painted a liberal amount of this all over the surface of the clock. Now, if I did get any Mod Podge on the clock itself, on the wood and not on the paper, I wiped that off. I wanted to keep the Mod Podge on the paper and not on the clock. Once I had this top layer of Mod Podge coated all over the surfaces of the paper, I let it dry for three hours. Now it's time to replace the broken pole. I had a leftover knob from a previous project a long time ago. It is the cutest little knob. It looks like a flower. It's gold and white, and I think it will look fantastic on this drawer front. So I got my drill again, and I drilled a hole right in the center of the drawer front. Then I took my knob and pressed it through the hole. On the back, I put a washer and a nut to hold it in place. Now we can reattach the latch on the side. I got my drill and I just screwed that right back into place. The final step is to put the clock mechanism back into the clock. This is something that I probably should have tested out first. I don't even know if this works. so. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it does. I got my battery and I put it into the clock mechanism and thankfully it works, you guys. So not only did we get a great price on this clock, but it's a working clock. So that's a definite score. I just popped it right back into the front of my clock and it sprung into place. I am beyond thrilled with the way that this adorable clock turned out. We definitely went out on a limb choosing a darker color palette, but I think the black coordinates so beautifully with our decorative paper. The gold hinges, the handle, and the latch add an elegant touch. And I think the new knob is a beautiful accent. Let's look back at our inspiration piece. This clock from Etsy cost $78. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my clock, the grand total was $12.99. What a fantastic price and a great savings over inspiration piece. I love the way that my clock looks. It has an elegant feel 
and it's personalized to my taste. I had a request from one of my fabulous subscribers to make a wall art piece similar to the one that I found on the Pottery Barn website. It is this palm leaf shadow box wall art. This is such a cool piece of art. It would go with a lot of different styles and designs. I love the size. However, it is $399 which is quite expensive and I know that we can recreate it for less. So the first thing that we need is a frame. I headed to my local thrift store. They always have such an amazing variety of frames there. I found one that had a thin frame and it was square. It was the perfect size and shape and the best part is that it was only $5.99. What we want to use is the frame and not the art that's inside. So we're gonna remove the art and the mat from the frame. And then I carefully lifted out the glass so that we were left with just the frame only. I don't know how long it was at the thrift store, so I washed it with a damp cloth to make sure it was nice and clean. So when we spray paint it, the paint will adhere to the frame. I'm going to be using some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint to paint our frame white. I took it outside and I sprayed it in the spray paint. I made sure that the entire frame was covered in the spray paint. I did the front, the sides, and painted the inside of the frame as well to make sure it was all one cohesive color. Once it was completely coated in the paint, I let it dry for two hours. While the paint is drying, this is a perfect time for us to get started on our palm leaf. We are going to make ours out of some poster board. I picked up mine at Target. They were only 99 cents, which is cheaper than in the Dollar Tree, so that's a great place to get your poster board. What I'm gonna do with my poster board is cut strips out of it. So I got my self-healing mat and I put my poster board over the top. Then I got a pencil and a ruler and I marked out one and a half inch wide segments. Then I got my rotary cutter and I cut the poster board into strips. One poster board was large enough to give me all the pieces that I needed to create this palm art. Once I had all the poster board strips, I cut them into various lengths. I did a seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 inch long strips. Once all of these segments were cut, I folded them in half. Then I cut the top with scissors into points. I repeated this process with all of my poster board pieces. Now it's time to create our fan. So I took the smallest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue in the center, pressed it together, and then I put some hot glue on the outside. Then I took my second folded segment of poster board and pressed it firmly to the first segment. I repeated the process of hot gluing the inside and the outside of the folded poster board pieces in ascending order until I had half of the fan hot glued and connected together. Then I got started on the second half of the fan. Again, I took the shortest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue on it and then I just hot glued all of the other poster board pieces together. This time I divided it up into three different segments. That way when I put it all together, I could move everything around and make sure that it was all nice and evenly fanned out. We need to create a background that's similar to our inspiration piece background. I have this fabric, it's leftover fabric. It's actually from my dining chairs and it is the perfect match to our inspiration piece. So what I'm gonna do with my fabric is put it over the self-healing mat and then take the back of the frame and place that over my fabric. Then I got a ruler and my rotary cutter and I simply just cut around the backing of the frame. This will give me a perfect square that will fit right on top of the backing. Once my square was cut out, I got some hot glue and I put it along the edge of the backing. I kept the hot glue to the edges, that way we didn't have any lumps or bumps in the center of the fabric. I continued to add the hot glue to the edges and then pressed the fabric into the hot glue. Now it's time to adhere the fan to the fabric. So what I did was I just took some hot glue and I put it on the back of the first half of the fan and then I pressed it firmly to the fabric. 
I added a bunch of hot glue in various places on the backing of the fan. You don't want this to move around, you want it to be stable. So adding a decent amount of hot glue will hold everything in place. Then I took the additional segments for the other side of the fan and added the hot glue to the back of those and placed them in the right spots to create the other half of my fan. I did cut some additional segments of poster board for filler just in case I needed it. So I did add a couple extra little fan pieces in there to make my palm leaf look nice and full. Now that the palm leaf is in place, we need to add a stem. So I just cut a rectangle and just rounded the top, got some hot glue, added it to the back and pressed it to the fan. Now in my inspiration piece, if you zoom in really close, you can see there's like some frayed pieces of either fabric or paper. So in order to recreate that, what I'm gonna do is get some cotton balls and I'm just gonna pull them apart, add a little bit of hot glue to the fan and then put the cotton ball right over the top. I think that this mimics our inspiration piece fantastically. Plus as a bonus, it is hiding all of the places where the fans are connected. You never wanna see the mechanics of how everything is stuck together. So these cotton ball pieces are a great way to hide all of that. Now that our palm leaf art is done, all we need to do is put it right back into the frame. I flip my frame over and put our art right back in the center. One thing that we are not going to be doing is putting the glass back over the front. We don't have the space for it because of the 3D palm leaf. Our inspiration piece was a shadow box. Ours is just going to be an open frame. We will have our 3D palm art stick out, which is just fine for me. I actually really like it this way. So that is one liberty that we are going to take over our inspiration piece. And that's it, we are done. Look at how fantastic this palm art looks compared to our inspiration piece. I think they look so similar. They're similar in size, the leaves are the same, the backing's the same. I just really love the way that this turned out. And the best part is finding out the price differentiation from our inspiration piece to what I made. So let's calculate my expenses. In total, it cost me $14 to create my palm leaf wall art. I think that that is a steal. Finding the frame from the thrift store was a great jumping off point to create our wall art. For $5.99, it kept everything in budget. Using the poster board was cost efficient and all the other little pieces didn't add up to much. So if you think you can't get a high-end piece of wall art, you can head to your thrift store. That's a great place to start. Cake stands are one of those items that I can never get enough of. So when I saw this beautiful cake stand on the Pottery Barn website, I knew I really wanted to dupe it. This is a Mason stoneware cake stand. It's classic, beautiful, and would be perfect for any party. The price of this cake stand is $59, and I know that we can recreate one for so much less. At my thrift store, they have this section that has chargers and trays and dishware. I found this wood charger that was the perfect size and shape, and it was only $3.99. So now we have the top of our cake stand. We just need to find a base. I had a hard time trying to find one that mimicked exactly our inspiration piece. But while I was at Hobby Lobby, I headed over to the vase section and I found a terracotta pot that didn't have a raised edge around the top. It was sleek, clean, it was the right shape. It was perfect for our base. Now I've got both pieces of my cake stand. So I'm gonna take them outside and I'm gonna spray them in the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure the top and the sides of the terracotta pot were completely covered in this paint. And then I moved on to the wood charger. I spray painted the top and the sides of this charger. Once everything was well coated in the white spray paint, I let these pieces dry for two hours. After two hours, I came back and I flipped everything over so I could do the opposite side. I sprayed the inside of the terracotta pot and then I also sprayed the underside of the wood charger. Once these pieces were completely coated in the paint, I let them dry for another hour. 
Now, all we need to do is adhere these two pieces together. I added some E6000 to our terracotta pot and then placed our wood charger in the center. Once my two pieces were in place, I let them dry overnight. Occasionally, I like to add a protective coating over the top, and I know I'm gonna be using this cake stand frequently, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to spray it in a protective coating. So what I'm gonna be using is this Krylon Satin Finish Permanent Protective Finish. So I took my cake stand back outside and I sprayed it in this protective finish. Once I was finished spraying the protective coating on the cake stand, I let it dry for another hour. And that's it, you guys. We are finished with our Pottery Barn Dupe cake stand. Look at how fantastic this cake stand looks. I love using versatile pieces like this. You can use a cake stand like this for displaying decorative objects, a candle. Of course, you can use it to display your beautiful food. You could put a cloche over the top. I love having multi-purpose pieces of home decor. They are great on your budget. And I think that my cake stand looks almost identical to our Inspiration Pottery Barn cake stand. The thing that is not identical is the price. After calculating all the costs that I spent to create my cake stand, the price was $13.96. That's a great savings over our inspiration piece. I love this cake stand and I love the price. I was rummaging through the shelves at my thrift store and I came across this plate. I think it's a plate to hold deviled eggs, right? You put the little eggs in the divots. Well, I absolutely loved the shape of it and the price was right at $1.99. This plate also reminded me of some scalloped like marble trays that I've seen that people use to display candles and other decorative items. I think it is so pretty. I love the white milk glass and the gold around the rim. However, the gold around the rim had been rubbed really thin in some places and was completely missing in others. This is going to be a quick, easy fix. All I needed to do was tape off the scallop ridges and around the outside in some blue painter's tape. I also took a little bit of that leftover gift bag and placed it in the center to protect the center of the plate. I took my tray outside and I sprayed it in a coat of metallic gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed it around the scalloped edge and then I let it dry for two hours. I removed the paper and the blue painter's tape and it looks brand new. Now here is a little tip. I had a bit of overspray that got onto the actual plate itself. So all I needed to do to remove that was to get some fingernail polish remover and some tissue. And then I just wiped it right off. Now this plate is better than new. I'm going to place a candle in the center and it looks like a high-end scallop tray that you would pay an exorbitant amount of money for and we only spent $1.99. A few of you have requested that I do some coastal DIYs. So our next Pottery Barn dupe is going to be recreating this coral snack bowl. This is very nautical and whimsical. It would be a fun way to display some snacks at an outdoor party. This piece is $34.50, so let's recreate it for less. At the thrift store, I found this coral bowl. It was plastic, it was blue, it was a great shape, and it was a great price. The price was only $2.99. In order to get that craggly coral feel, we are going to add some detail to our coral bowl. So what I got was some Dollar Tree bath salts and some Mod Podge. I painted the Mod Podge onto the coral bowl and then I sprinkled the bath salts right over the top. I just continued to add the Mod Podge to the bowl and then sprinkle all of this bath salts over the top. The bath salts will stick fantastically to the Mod Podge. So once I was done with the inside of the bowl, I flipped it over and I did the exact same thing on the underside. I put the Mod Podge on there and then I sprinkled the bath salts over the top. 
I did leave the bottom of the bowl plain because we want to be able to set it down on a table flat. Once this was finished, I let it dry for an hour. And then I looked at it and I wanted to have a little more detail on there. I needed to have some more coral. So I decided to do a second layer over the top. So I just simply added some more Mod Podge with my sponge brush. I just painted it over the top of the original coral basalt pieces and sprinkled the basalts over the top. This makes the coral design even more exaggerated. So once I was done with the inside, again, I flipped it over and I did the underside. Once all of my bath salts were in place, I let it dry for three hours. As an alternative to bath salt, you could use some little pebbles or sand. That would work great too. Now we need to paint our bowl white. So I took it outside and I sprayed it in the same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint that we've used in all of our projects thus far. I made sure that the bowl was completely covered in the spray paint. I did the inside, the outside, and underneath the bowl. Once it was 100% coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. <laughs> you guys, look at how cool this bowl is. It's got that jagged, uneven feel that real coral has. And if you're worried about this stuff coming off the basalt, it's on there really good. Between all the Mod Podge layers and the spray paint, it's stuck on there really good. So you don't have to worry about the basalt flaking off all over the place. I absolutely love the way that this looks. You could put some decorative pieces inside. You could put a candle inside. You could put an anchor, shells, some nautical decor in there. You could also mimic our inspiration piece and put a glass bowl inside and fill it with some food and put it out at a summer party. How fun would that be? I added up all the expenses and the total cost to create my coral bowl was $10.25. That's a great savings. Do they look absolutely identical? No, but this one definitely has the spirit of our inspiration piece. So for all of you nautical lovers out there that are looking for some coastal design ideas, I hope this works for you. Some of the best thrifted pieces are items that you did not expect to find. Because I had been scouring the Pottery Barn website for a while, I knew what was on there. So when I came across this gorgeous glass pitcher at the thrift store, I knew it was, first of all, it's simply stunning. But secondly, it mimicked a picture that I saw on the Pottery Barn website. The picture on the Pottery Barn website is $99, and mine is only $2.99. I scooped this picture up so fast, not only because it's beautiful, but because I don't have anything like it. Look at how pretty the handle is on this one, and I actually like mine better because of the spout. It has a beautiful dip and curve to it. This would be a gorgeous way to display a specialty drink at a party, or you could just add some of that filtered water and put some lemon slices in it. The difference between the Pottery Barn pitcher and my pitcher is that theirs comes with a stirring stick and I am going to have to use a spoon, <laughs> which is just fine with me. In order to save that much money, I didn't have to pay $99. I paid $2.99 to get mine. So when you're at your thrift store, just look around. You never know what you're gonna be able to find. You deserve to live beautifully every single day in your own way. And I think today we proved that you can do it on a budget. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.